Okay. I'm on. Um, so, uh, for anyone who is just tuning in, I was having some technical difficulties. Honestly, new Facebook is kicking my ass. Um, I had a live going just a second ago and I was trying to get back to the old, uh, Facebook because I can't figure out this new one and it didn't let me, but it did kick me off of that video. So I'm starting over. Um, I can see that some people have already jumped on. Uh, for anyone who is already on here, I still can't see where you guys are, who's coming in, um, which is very strange and not what I'm used to. Um, usually I can say hi to all you guys coming in as you come in, and I cannot for the life of me figure out where it is telling me uh, who's on here. Um, usually if I know who's on here, I can ask specific questions, I can call you out, I can say hi. Um, so if you were on just a second ago, I apologize. I'm going to repeat a couple of things. Um, one thing is yay for Facebook Live. We haven't done these in forever. If you're newer to the group, and by newer, I mean like in the last 10 months, maybe close to a year. So end of last year, 2019, we used to do these things weekly. And honestly, I can't remember what happened or I got distracted or something. Um, and then we tried one Facebook Live in the beginning of quarantine. I think it was maybe April or something. And honestly, everyone was so distracted and rightfully so um, because the world was imploding. Um, hey, Chris, Jen, thanks for, thank you guys for telling me you're on. If you're on here, tell me uh, you're on here because I cannot, uh, like I said, for the life of me, find where it normally tells me who is watching um and i'm gonna try and not let that distract me because it's totally distracting me right now because um, i want to be able to say hi to you guys but so we used to do facebook lives all the time and between uh that time later last year and now the group has grown to a size i never expected so when i started the turnkey rental properties facebook group I honestly didn't even know if anybody would be interested, much less um, this many people. I think we're somewhere in the 1700 range at this point. Um, it, the conversations are fantastic. The questions are fantastic. Um, I love what it's become. Honestly, I have so many people asking me to join now. Like if they haven't answered the questions and agreed to the rules, I just ask them because um, we have that many people where we can get a little bit pickier now. Um, so if you do have friends trying to get in the group, tell them to answer all the questions. Um, uh, Jen cannot evict her tenant. Uh oh, we'll get to that. Ooh, that reminds me, we'll talk about the eviction moratorium. Um, so I do want to put a note out. So when this video is live right now, when it finishes, it'll take Facebook, I don't know, like 10 to 20 minutes or something that they'll post the replay in the news feed. So it'll show up. So anyone, if you came in late, whatever, you can watch it. But also I've started taking these videos and putting them on YouTube. So if you're watching this video right now from YouTube, it means you're watching the replay. And one thing I'm really going to try and do is make a note of when the really good conversations start, because usually in the beginning of a live, like, you know, we're giving people time to jump on and like I keep whining about, um, I used, you know, I'd spend some time saying hi to everyone because I could see who was actually watching, which is what I cannot find right now. If somebody's bored watching this, do you want to Google how can you see who's joined your live video in the new Facebook? <laughs> like, um, I didn't know I was so attached to that feature, but I am. Um, but if you're watching this in YouTube, um, once we really start diving into the conversations and the questions and all things turnkey, I'm going to try and remember to make, to write down a note of what time in the video that actually starts. If I can, uh, okay, yeah, I've got a timer here trying to find everything with new Facebook. Um, so that way you can skip the pleasantries, skip whatever, because, uh, you know, like I said, obviously if you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching it for a replay, which means you're watching it for the information, and I'll try and give you a cheat uh, to where that information is. So just check the comments for kind of a mile marker, if you will, on that. So um, with that said, there's quite a few of you on here now. Um, if you haven't said hi and who you are, give me a shout out. Tell me who's on here. Um, like I said, I can't figure out where to see who is on here. Um, and more importantly than that, bust out your turnkey questions. What burning turnkey questions do you have? Do you have, um, or tell me how your 2020 is going. We haven't even talked since like 
early days quarantine. And with a lot of you, we've never been on Facebook Live together. So if you have questions about how the Facebook Lives work, if you have turnkey questions, if you have turnkey concerns, turnkey wonders, um, if you've had a good turnkey experience lately, if you have basically anything, go ahead and start uh, putting it into the comments. And that's what we're going to go off of. So um, another thing, uh, one reason I have a headset on right now is I have an air conditioning fan blowing on me right now, and if for some reason you can't hear me well because of it, shoot a comment and let me know. I'll turn it off. I'll probably unattractively start sweating, but um, yeah, hopefully the fan is not too loud uh, in your ear. So let's start. So everybody start... Um, throwing your questions in. Um, we'll start with Jen. Uh, I don't think you've been on one of our Facebook Lives. Thanks for joining the group. Thanks for being on here. And you can't evict your tenant. Um, I'm assuming this is a COVID thing. If you can shoot over any more details, um, I would say, is this a turnkey property? But it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, turnkey, for anyone who hasn't really ever clarified this, turnkey is a way of buying rental properties. It's not a way of owning rental properties. So once you buy a turnkey, you basically own a rental property like any other rental property. Only difference might be that you have the property manager, maybe it's not local to you or whatever. Um, but so like evicting tenants, for example, or the eviction moratoriums, it pertains to all properties, regardless of turnkey or not. Um, Jen also let me know, not that I can speak to it really one way or another, what state this is in. Um, I have three adults in the home, two collect Social Security, and one works. So what do you, are they just not paying rent? And if not, are they claiming COVID? Like what's... Um, What's your, what's the status? Um, Chris, awesome to see you on. I am so appreciative of your contributions in the group. Um, yeah, I've really appreciated all of our messaging and everything. So thanks for joining on here. Um, while we get more information for Jen, and this will definitely be all the more reason for me to figure out what time we actually start talking. Um, uh, I'm still going to try and figure out how to see who's on here. Um, okay, so Jen says, no COVID thing. They get steady income just playing games, Ohio. Honestly, um, I think Ohio, I want to say that their uh, eviction more. So the new eviction moratorium that just came out, was it a week ago, a week and a half from the CDC, which... Don't even get me started on how that's possible. Um, is technically it's supposed to be very specific for COVID reasons, and if you if someone does not match the criteria for the COVID related issues, um, you can still evict. So I know a lot of people still going through the eviction processes. Um, one caveat to that is, which I believe might pertain to Ohio, is if so. This is a federal eviction moratorium. And if a state has a an, its own eviction moratorium and it's stronger than the new federal one, the state's uh, moratorium takes precedence. So I feel like Ohio is one of those states because one of the issues is, um, you know, a lot of the turnkey providers are running out of inventory right now because they really they get a lot of their properties from foreclosures. Well, people can't get foreclosed on right now. First of all, the courts aren't open, but also with the uh, mortgage um, forbearances, you know, can't evict tenants, all this kind of stuff. It's drying up the foreclosure inventory. So it's really affecting turnkey providers too. So the only reason I'm even remotely uh, familiar with um, Ohio is because I work with a provider in Cleveland and he's literally selling off his own properties right now because there's no foreclosure, so they have no inventory otherwise to sell. So if Ohio's eviction moratorium is stronger than the new federal eviction moratorium, Ohio's is going to take precedence. So if, you know, if it's just the federal one and it's not a COVID-related reason, you can still evict. But if Ohio's um, is not as specific to COVID, you know, I don't, I don't know what to tell you um, other than maybe post in like bigger pockets, see if anyone else has had that issue in Ohio. But you may be, you know, it, you may be stuck for a minute. So maybe try and find some other Ohio investors, find out, call a local, I don't know, prop, maybe even a property management company because they would probably be really familiar with all of that. So um, 
Boo to the eviction moratoriums. I Okay. Whew. Um, Beth, awesome to have you on here. Um, let's see. We made a mistake of closing before getting the report that everything from the inspection that the turnkey company was going to fit. Oh, this is going to be a good one. I haven't even finished it yet, and this is going to be a good one. I'm also going to write down that we are at 1016, so anyone watching on YouTube or any of the replays, this is kind of where the good stuff starts happening. Um, okay, Jen, to follow up on the Ohio thing, my lawyer said, no, I can't, which suggests to me Ohio's eviction moratorium is stronger than the federal one, which um, it's I not much you're going to be able to do. So all you can really look into for yourself is mortgage forbearance. I am very leery about those. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to tell you on that one. It, we Landlords are kind of really getting the short end of the stick on this one in a lot of ways. Um, okay, so Beth, back to your question. We made a mistake of closing before getting the report that everything from the inspection that the turnkey company was going to fix was completed. It's now been close to two months, and we have exchanged text messages, phone calls, etc. with the turnkey company, realtor partner, Yet one excuse after another as to why we haven't received the report. Any words of advice on how to get that? They do provide a one-year maintenance warranty, but I want to make sure we have paperwork and proof that items were fixed. A hundred percent. I have some follow-up questions if you uh, are prepared to type. Um, when you said realtor partner, but this is still a is it a turnkey provider company? I th I want to say I knew. Did I know who you were buying from? I don't I don't remember. Um, but if it's something other than a normal turnkey provider company, let me know. Because I'm just going to answer as if it's a regular turnkey provider. I just don't know what realtor partner uh, specifically means. Um, so for anybody watching, um, the inspection report is huge. Um, and so the typical process, just to kind of give a little bit of a background, is you're going to get your property inspected when it's time, when the construction's done, whatever. And you're going to have this whole long report that probably looks terrifying, saying, oh my god, the house is going to implode. That's just how it goes. So what you're going to do at that point is you're going to make a list of everything that's wrong with the property, and you're going to give that to the seller and say, hey, the turnkey provider, and say, hey, I would like all of these things fixed. And if there's anything on that list that they don't want to fix or don't feel a need to fix or whatever, they can respond. But really, ultimately, there's no point in holding back. Like, don't make the decision for yourself what you should ask for, what you shouldn't ask for, just wait, ask them for everything. And if they say, hey, we aren't gonna fix this for this reason, then you can decide whether you agree with that or not. For instance, let's say a hot water heater in there is 10 years old and they're like, I'm not gonna replace it. Well, for a turnkey property, you should not have a 10 year old hot water heater in there. So you can demand like, hey, you have gotta fix that. But if it's something minor or whatever, Cool. So when you give them the list, they this this is standard process. You're going to give them the list and say, hey, I want all of these things repaired per the inspection report. And they're going to come back to you and say, we agree to, I don't know, 17 of the 18 things. And you're like, okay, cool. Now, this part can vary between companies. And Beth, if you have information on this um, for your situation, uh, let me know what it is. When So the standard process is you give them the list. They say, yes, we agree to fix 17 of those 18 things. And usually they will put that agreement into like an addendum to the sales contract um, to make it a legal thing, saying, yes, we are signing up to be legally obligated to have these things fixed. So, Beth, one question for you is, did that happen? Like, is there a legal addendum to your sales contract that where they agreed to fix all of these things? Um and you said turnkey provider company. He is a realtor as well. And yes, you know the company we bought through. Um, oh, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> um, yeah, and for sure, let me know if it's somebody that if it's a company that I know personally, um, or if I know people who know that company. For sure, let me know or email me or send me a Facebook message because if they're not answering you, we'll str I like we'll go in and strong arm for sure on your behalf. So if it's someone I know, then absolutely, I will jump all over those people <laughs> for you in a very nice, sophisticated manner. Um, okay, so you did not get a legal written agreement to all those things, it was all verbal. And honestly, that's okay, because a lot of people don't really go this far into detail into the process. And, and honestly too, most, I shouldn't say most of the sellers, but at least most of the sellers I work with, 
Um, I've heard of very few cases. If I may not have actually ever heard of one case where the turnkey provider verbally agreed to do, you know, X, Y, and Z, and then just didn't and just let it go. Um, so in your case, you ended up buying in Harrisburg. If it's the company, oh, okay. So shoot me an email. Um, if for some reason you don't still have my email address, let me know in the comments. Um, that company, if it's the one that I know and we work with, their communication lately has been god awful, quite frankly. Um, so absolutely send me the email. Um, and if you can, I think I'll have access to these comments after the video ends. But if you can, just in case I lose access to the comments, will you copy and paste your original um, post where you're explaining what the problem is? Will you copy and paste that into your email? Um, and I will a thousand percent jump over, jump all over everybody. Um, the good news is if it's the people that I know, the things will absolutely get fixed. Um, but yeah, there's no reason to not be communicating about it. So let me drum up the army for you. Um, and we'll a hundred percent do that. Just shoot me an email. Um, again, like I said, copy and paste the issue and then I'll put it in the correct hands. Um, and also remind me in the comments how long ago you bought. Um, like I'm wondering how much time has gone by since you closed, since these items were supposed to be done. Um, okay. Uh, did I answer? Well, let me just kind of circle back. So I think you and I are going to take care of this uh, offline. Um, two takeaways I want everybody watching to um, uh, take. Number one. When you get the inspection report, come up with a whole list of things you want fixed. Basically include everything on the report. No reason not to. Get the seller to agree to whatever they're going to agree to. And for safety, have them put in as a legal like addendum to the sales contract saying, hey, we XYZ company agree to you know fix the following items. Now, I will say in this case, or not in this case, not best case, but just in general, um, uh, there could be a difference. Well, okay, hang on. Let me revise what I just said. If the seller agrees to fix all of the items prior to closing, you don't necessarily need that. You don't need that legal addendum because you literally can, you cannot close on the property until those items are done and there's proof of those fixes. So whether that's pictures video, a new inspection, whatever it is. So in that case, you don't need the legal addendum. If the seller, for some reason, and I've seen this in cases like, I think it was one year, like, I don't know if it was Indianapolis or somewhere with snow. It used to happen in Chicago a lot, where like if the person was about to close in January and it needed some particular thing done, but because of the snow and the weather or whatever, it just didn't even make sense to do that repair then. What the seller would do is write out a legal addendum or get a legal addendum and legally sign off saying, hey, I agree to do this repair by, you know, whatever time, six months from then or whatever it is. So that way you have that sheet of paper that says, hey, you agreed to do this. And if I have to go to court over it, here's the piece of paper where you promised. So I'm actually kind of glad this popped in my head because I didn't really think to, uh, I wasn't thinking of the two different cases. So if you have the leverage of not closing until all those repairs are proven, cool. You don't need the legal paperwork because you're just going to not close on the property if it's not done. If those repairs are going to go past closing time, that's when you need the legal addendum because you want to have that later in case for some reason, you know, if you close on the property and the turnkey seller moves to the Caribbean or whatever they're going to do, you know, you don't want to be left shafted with whatever possible repair this is. So um, that's takeaway number one, how to handle uh, managing the turnkey inspection items. Uh, takeaway number two, and this is a much more general, broad statement, and I actually just recorded a video about this exact thing, um, not because of Beth's case, but because of somebody else. Um, if you are working with a... Oh, Beth, I think it's starting to come back to me. You, 
I know the company, but you bought through the company before you talked to us, if I remember correctly. Um, in that case, even if we didn't really help you facilitate that, we'll still 100% have your back and reach out to them and ask on your behalf for sure. So I think it's all kind of coming back to me now. Um, but takeaway number two for everybody listening and watching, and this is so important, um, and that's Beth, I think this does not pertain to you because I think you did buy directly from the turnkey provider. But if you're working with a turnkey marketing company or the turnkey promoter company, which means you're not working with a direct provider, but ultimately you're buying the property from the direct provider, what very often can happen is, so you meet me, I'm a turnkey marketer, and I'm like, hey, I like this turnkey provider over here. And you're like, yeah, I like them too. I want to buy one of their properties. So I'm like, hey, turnkey provider, meet Suzy Q. And they're like, hi, Suzy Q, we'll sell you a property. So Suzy Q and turnkey provider start this whole relationship because that is where the purchase is happening. So let's say Suzy Q is going along, going along. Let's say Suzy Q has never bought a turnkey property too. So there's a lack of familiarity with the process. It's hard to know what's normal, what's not normal. Um, it just, it can be a little bit overwhelming your first couple times just because you don't know what you don't know. So Suzy Q sees some kind of red flag and is like, Ooh, I wonder if that's normal. Like, oh, I'm sure it is because everything should be fine. Then something else happens. Then the seller stops communicating or, you know, it's this whole spiral of things. It is so important, really for you, the investor, but for everyone else too. But, uh, well, actually everyone's kind of impacted by this. But if you met that turnkey provider through a turnkey marketing company, I don't know a single turnkey marketing company who doesn't genuinely care about your experience. So if at any point you're having hardships, challenges, lack of communication from the provider, turnkey providers are notorious for a lack of communication. So like whatever your challenges, or even if it's good updates, keep the turnkey marketing company abreast of those things because if let's say the turnkey provider, something important is going on, they're just not communicating with you. Well, the marketing company will strong arm them for you. They will make sure, you know, they'll stay on top of them. The turnkey marketing companies are really like customer service buffers. So use them as such, because what I've seen so many times is the investor or the buyer gets, you know, something happens, something happens. They don't say a word to anyone. So the turnkey marketing company, who's assuming all is going well, continues to assume all is going well. You know, everyone thinks everything's okay. And then like the day before closing, the investor freaks out and cancels the contract. Well, this affects everyone involved. Number one, the investor, because they may have just lost out on a really nice, perfectly good property. The seller, because they just held this property for anywhere from like 30 to 60 days on a stretch, 30 to 45 days, but 30 to 60 days, I, you know, their money is tied up into that. So now in order to get a new buyer, they're going to have to hold it for another couple months, which that's hard on them financially. Like that, it's a big deal. The marketing companies hurt because now they look bad because whose fault do you think everyone's going to think it is? It's like, oh, well, the marketing company told me about this provider. The whole thing can snowball so fast, quite often when there was nothing to be worried about in the first place. But like I said, lack of communication happens, then this misunderstanding happens, and this something happens. And it's not to say every experience is always perfect, but so often things just blow up for no good reason. So that super long ramble is to say, huge takeaway for all turnkey investors, if you're working with a turnkey marketing company, keep them posted even if it's something you don't think you should be stressed about or you think it's really small let them know because the more you stay on top of those things the less snowballing is going to happen Whew, i got off on a little and and beth that wasn't for your um because i now that i'm remembering um oh you did go through the marketing company we did go through the uh, I'll circle back with the turnkey marketing company. We did go through them first and they introduced us to the provider we bought through. So like I said, definitely email me because I want to help out with this for sure. But um, so in this case and everyone's cases, never leave the turnkey marketing company out of the equation for the, for, for the sole reason of not blowing things up. But turnkey providers are so often terrible 
at communication, at processes, at systems, like customer service, with the exception of like REI Nation and all those guys who charge for their customer service, basically, with exceptions of a few companies, turnkey providers are notoriously terrible at all of those things. They're really good at properties and they're really good at flipping properties off. They're not good on communication. So, you know, um, use utilize the turnkey marketing company as much as possible it's what they're there for and and they want to like i said i've never met one that doesn't want to help so um circle back with them uh but email me also and i'll stay in the loop and help you out uh for sure but um so you guys close july 24th yeah, that's crazy. And I will also say, actually, and I don't know that necessarily this is the case for your property, but as a general blanket statement right now, so it is September of 2020. We are six months plus into COVID, into quarantine, and more importantly, eviction and foreclosure moratoriums. And one thing that is starting to become a rampant problem um, because of COVID is construction times. So um, like the provider that we work with in Cleveland, I already said that he's having to sell properties out of his personal portfolio because the moratorium is so thick in Ohio, they don't even have access to foreclosed properties to flip. So um, in order to kind of buy time, he's literally selling properties from his personal portfolio. But also what has happened in Ohio, and it's starting to happen all over the place, construction times and rehab times are getting crazy. Think about it. Nobody wants to be in a house. Who are you going to hire? You know, you have to hire people to physically be in the house. Well, the plumber doesn't want to be next to the electrician because COVID. So it is really, it's, um, we've had a lot of buyers recently get nervous because it seems like their construction's taking forever. Um, because, and even finding tenants. People trying to find tenants right now is hard because there's like virtual showings. You know, people are nervous to be around other people. Do you go in with a mask? Are you comfortable with that? COVID has, I mean, it's trickled through every little crack and crevice in the world and everyone's lives anyways. But especially in real estate investing, it's interesting because properties now are really starting to fly off the shelf. People are buying real estate at a speed I haven't seen, honestly, since kind of closer to the crash back in, you know, well, I mean, I started into this in like 2011, 2012, and we're not quite at that speed as far as buyers yet, um, but it's it's creeping up there. This, this is the most amount of buyers I've seen in years. Um, so on that hand, you know, housing is really benefiting from COVID for a whole slew of reasons, um, but the turnkeys in particular, number one, a lot of the turnkey providers are selling out because they literally can't access foreclosed properties in order to flip them and sell them. But number two, rehabs, constructions, finding tenants, anything that involves human to human contact is taking way longer than normal because of the COVID logistics with, you know, mask and distancing and all that, like construction crews kind of can't distance all that much. Um, so keep in mind, and I say that, Beth, to not say, you know, July 24th, like, I can, I would love to assume that all of those repairs were long done a long time ago, and they're just communicating um, terrible about it. But for anybody who has either closed more recently or is about to close, just realize that all of those times are getting pretty delayed. <sighs> okay. I forgot how much I love doing Facebook Lives. Um, okay, I saw some stuff pop in here. Uh, Jen said, I think I need to learn the definition of turnkey provider rental. Um, totally understood. Um, a lot of people get into the group having no idea what it is. Well, in the beginning, it used to be they thought we were turnkey vacation rentals. In short, uh, turnkey refers to the condition of a property. Um, so you can buy a property in turnkey condition, which means it's freshly rehabbed, there's tenants in, and in most cases, there's property managers on standby to manage the property for you. So the whole metaphor of turnkey is you can literally stick the key in the door, turn it, and you're making cash flow on day one. So you could buy the house next door to you in turnkey condition. But as far as our group goes, and when people refer to turnkey rental properties, they're most often talking about properties that are sold by turnkey providers. So these companies, they're basically glorified flippers who operate in bulk and mostly sell to investors. But these companies will be in markets where 
um, they can set up their business, like let's say Indianapolis, St. Louis, wherever, and they go out, they buy the distressed properties, they rehab them, they place tenants, and they have property managers on standby. So you as the investor literally just have to buy the house. You've got to do due diligence and stuff like that. But you as the investor, you don't have to do the rehab and you don't have to do the negotiation. It's, it's basically the most hands-off way to buy and invest in a rental property. So that's what we're talking about is the turnkey rental property sold by turnkey providers. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, you're very welcome. Um, okay, I saw Chris in here somewhere. Where did you go? Um, and for anyone who uh, more recently tuned in, I am operating this from the new Facebook interface and normally it used to always tell me who was joining on so if I haven't said hi to you personally it's because I have no idea who's on here if you're not commenting I can't find that uh, feature I'm hoping it's not gone because um, it was very helpful to know who all was in here so I knew what to talk about and all that kind of stuff so um, if you are on here just type a hello into the comments so I know who's on here okay Chris says my biggest question with turnkeys has always been how to scale. Well, for good or for bad, I think that's everybody's question. Um, it's uh, definitely one of the more, I don't want to say unfortunate because it's such a doom and gloom type of thing. So I would say um, scaling with turnkeys, um, trying to think of my best answer. I can, I don't even have a best answer. I can give some options. Um, one option, <laughs> this is the best option, but also the least available. Um, so I don't know, it's probably not all that great for me to actually start with this one because it's kind of probably more of a tease than anything. Um, when I bought turnkeys starting in 2011, 2012, <coughs> excuse me, it, we were in the middle of the crash and, um, you know, there's, well, I should have led with this. On any rental property, there's two ways to really get appreciation. So you're always going to get like, you know, the overtime general market appreciation, whether it happens to be 3% a year, whatever, I don't know. But outside of general appreciation and like inflation type of stuff and whatever, there's two ways to really improve the value of a rental property. Number one, the Burr model, um, value add deals so you're forcing appreciation by rehabbing or improving the property somehow so that you can do um, which is obviously not really or at all a thing with turnkeys um, the second thing which is what i was about to say with my uh, properties from 2011 2012 is the market can appreciate the properties for you um, this is not in anyone's control outside of really strategically buying when this is possible. So in 2011, I think it was actually, no, it was about 2011. I think Atlanta became one of, if not, well, probably easily the biggest turnkey market. And a lot of people were like, oh, well, you know, it's kind of that whole, you know, people, you should buy low, but people are nervous to buy low. The thing with Atlanta in 2011 was all of the market experts were like, this is about to blow up. Like the price to rent ratios in Atlanta were absurd. My very first turnkey, cute two-story house, fully rehabbed tenants, decent. I would say it's a B minus at least, if not B neighborhood, $55,000. And at the time it was renting for nine, nine seventy-five. Uh, it's listed for rent right now for $1,450. I paid $55,000 for it. So this is what was going on in Atlanta in 2011. The price to rent ratios were absurd for cash flow. And everybody knew, all the market experts were like, Atlanta's going to boom. Give it two years. And sure enough, I think it was the end of, it wasn't even two years. I think it was at the end of 2012. I was actually in Atlanta for the holidays um, for quite a while. And I was, I was showing people turnkeys all the time. I was going in and out of all of them. And I'm not kidding you, it was, I don't know, like November or something, whatever month. It was like I woke up one morning and literally every single property that had been for sale was now $20,000 higher. And I was like, seriously? <laughs> like, I mean, prices in Atlanta went crazy. This also happened in Dallas. I, I think it was 
early 2014, somewhere in the 2014 range, where it wasn't quite as big a boom of Atlanta, but it was probably, I'd say, the second biggest boom um, of all the crashed markets at the time. So if you have the opportunity to buy super low, <coughs> uh, oh, I'm getting too excited, and now I'm going to choke myself. Um, and of course, I didn't bring any water with me. Um, if you have the opportunity to buy at the beginning of a market, that is your best chance, honestly, with a turnkey to get the appreciation because you can't improve a turnkey for the most part. So you have to rely on that market appreciation. With that said, like right now, I would say if any of the market, I mean, none of them are going to boom like Atlanta or Dallas because, I mean, we were talking a recession then and we're quite the opposite of a recession. Well, bad terms because we are in a recession. Housing is not. Um, like, Baltimore might have that chance right now. And honestly, if Detroit gets on its game, it may have that that chance. And that's what a lot of people have been watching with Detroit is like, you know, there's a balance of you don't want to buy in a market when it's so tanked out that you don't actually know if it's going to come back up. And that was really where Detroit's been for a long time. And it may have even changed now. I don't know. But like, you know, when you're looking at it, you want to buy as low as possible, but not so low that you don't actually know that it's, you know, not going to come back up. Um, so you want to make, but Atlanta, it was basically a given at that time. It was crazy town. Um, so all of that to say, that's not really an option right now. <laughs> is, that, is that not the worst answer possible? Um, but I say that so that if it does become an option, that is one of the, the most lucrative things you can do with a turnkey. Because at that point, buying at market value doesn't really matter as much because the market will carry you through the appreciation. Um, um, right now, for example, where you're not going to get that, um, you know, cash flow really is king. Um, so, you know, if you are buying, let's say, $100,000 turnkeys and you need 20000 for the down payment, let's say, let's make it an even ten grand for closing costs. It's not going to be that much, probably more like five. But let's say you need $30,000 for each $100,000 turnkey you're going to buy. If you have multiple sets of $30,000, you're automatically going to jumpstart your scaling option. Um, but to exactly why you're asking this and exactly everyone's problem, very few people have that many sets of $30,000. So in that case, what do you do? Um, you know, Drew put the article up, creative financing is huge. That's going to be one of your biggest tools. Um, the Burr keys, if you have the cash to start with that, because then you do get that forced appreciation from the improvement on the property. Um, you know, some people aren't even trying to scale with turnkeys. Maybe they are either just doing it to get their feet wet as investors, or maybe they're like flippers or whatever, and they just want, you know, the money they can't put to use at that time. Maybe they invest it in turnkeys. So there's all different strategies, but, you know, market appreciation, the reason I did make such a big deal out of that is because it is huge. So, like, if everybody knows that now, if we get in that position, you can know, oh, hey, I better jump because that really, that's like, I mean, my properties that I bought in, um, I just saw Brendan's, wow, I need to find some deals like that. Well, um, not only is that the case, so my $55,000 turnkey, I think, um, let's see, um, I'm going to type in Zillow right now. I'm going to make you um, even more envious. So all of my property, my turnkey, turnkeys that I bought in 2011, 2012 have mostly tripled and quadrupled in value since then. Like, not kidding. Um, which is, so aside from cash flow being absolutely stupidly ridiculous on that property, um, it is now, what's the, ugh, I mean, don't ever trust his estimate, but it's not going to tell me the estimate because it's for rent, so it's listed. Is there not really a estimate? Um, come on. So it's only giving me, um, it's only giving me the rental estimates because it's for, it's listed for rent right now. So it's not going to be said, well, okay, so maybe I won't rub it in, but yeah, all of my properties from 2011, 2012 in Atlanta have at least tripled in value. There's one of them who, which is, it's interesting. It's actually on like what used to be the sketchiest street of all of them. And that one has appreciated ridiculous amounts. I think I paid seventy four five for it, 
And the last Zillow I saw, again, don't ever take Zillow's word for anything, but occasionally I get bored late at night. I'm just curious. I think the last Zillow I saw was 270 something. Like, and it's not even on that safe of a street. I was like, okay. Um, okay, I'm going to stop talking about all that because that's a big T. So, um, to summarize, the question was, how do you scale with turnkeys? It's tricky. If the market can uh, appreciate it for you, that's going to be huge because then you can pull that equity and start snowballing just like you would with value adds. If you don't have the market option at the time, um, creative uh, financing is really going to be your huge thing. If you guys are new on here and you aren't familiar with Drew Pitchford's um, creative financing article, I think it's pinned as an announcement in the group. Um, so it should be up top somewhere. Drew creative finance, uh, creatively financed 12 turnkeys, and he has a lot of information there that I didn't even really know. So, you know, and, and this is really the case for real estate investing in general is how do you creative finance, creatively finance everything? Um, you know, it's not even just specific to turnkeys, but that's that's a big one for sure. Um, let me make sure I'm not missing anybody. Kathy, hi. Oh, I forgot I told people to say hi. Kathy, hello. Thanks. Uh, you're very welcome for the hosting, and thank you for joining. Um, again, anyone on here, it's the new Facebook interface, and it's not telling me who's on here. So that's why I haven't said hi to many people. So definitely leave a comment. Say hi. Let me know you're on. Um, and also, too, just kind of on this note, um, I used to do these Facebook Lives every week. Uh, it was at the end of last year, I think, for maybe like – two, three months or something. It was a regular thing. I personally love doing these. So if you guys like them, um, I don't know if we want to set up something regular where maybe we do once a month, maybe we do every other week. Um, you know, definitely let me know if this is helpful for everybody, because like I said, I, this is actually why I don't always do, uh, phone consults a whole lot. Cause I get so excited. I start rambling and I like, it's terrible. Um, so I love doing these. So if they're helpful for you guys, definitely let me know. Give me that feedback because I would love to keep doing them if you guys are interested. Well, I don't think, I think you're new to Facebook Live. I don't know how new to the group you are, but thanks for being on here. I'm interested in a property owned by U.S. Reeb, but would rather deal with a turnkey marketer. Is this a common issue? Um, no, it's not a common issue at all, but I can't tell you how excited of an issue that is for me. <laughs> like I am the biggest fan of working with a turnkey marketing company rather than working through the direct provider. So to exactly Beth's point, Beth's situation earlier, um, if you missed it, um, the replay will be in the post, but also like in short, um, Beth bought through a turnkey provider. They agreed to do some things and now communications completely dropped off and she can't get a verdict on these issues. Um, and this is one of the many reasons I am such a huge fan of working with the turnkey marketing companies for one shy of rent to retirement, you don't pay them to work with them. So you're basically getting like a free added layer of support and no, aside from winter rent to retirement, you're not paying, you know, the, the provider is not upping the price. If you go through a marketing company, you should be paying exactly the same price as if you bought it directly. So like whale, um, am I saying that right? Is it whale? Um, if you bought through us re versus a marketing company, you should pay the exact same price. So when I say like working with a marketing company is a free added layer of support, that should be 100% true. Um, anyone who's been in the group has seen that we have now figured out that rent to retirement, the marketing company does upcharge. So you can literally buy the exact same property through a different marketer or through the provider for cheaper than you can rent to retirement. I will spare all of you my soapbox on how I feel about that. Um, if you've been around, you are probably very clear on how I feel about that. Um, so what you're talking about is you want to work with a turnkey marketer versus U.S. REAP. I know it's not a common issue, but I wish it were because people are very quick to say, well, I just want to work with a direct provider because they assume they're either paying more through the marketer or, you know, why put more people in the equation, whatever. And people in my mind are not that, um, savvy or aware of, cause how would they be aware of this? I don't think they're aware of all of the benefits that a marketing company brings. You know, you hear marketing, it's like, oh, well, you know, they're just trying to sell me 
whatever. Um, and it's not the case. Um, there's so many benefits. I have a whole video on what I think the benefits of working with a marketing company are. With that said, um, most of the marketing, well, I take that back. Most of the marketing companies were working with US Reeb. Some of them are, but some of them are calling it quits with US Reeb. Um, US Reeb, I'm not going to get into this. Um, if any of you want to follow up with me after this, either shoot me a message in Facebook or leave a comment. Um, you can email me anytime. I don't want to um, go too far into US Reeb and all their drama, but basically, US Reeb has gotten a bit of a reputation. Um, I am now, I, w I used to recommend US Reeb, and I'm kind of at the stance now where I think that they sell some great properties. I think you can get a great deal from them, but there are so many, um, I would say I've heard so much negative feedback about different parts of the equation. None of the parts necessarily directly impact the property and the returns on that property itself. Um, but more from like the customer service perspective, the property management perspective, which that part is really important. Um, but you know, when that many communication issues, whatever are going on, you know, it's with the best turnkey provider out there, there can be plenty of challenges. So someone who now has become more or less known for challenges, I just, it makes me nervous to send people that way. Like if you're a really experienced turnkey buyer and you know exactly what should be going on, you know exactly what's going on, whatever, no problem. You can fend for yourself, like you can do whatever, but like for a brand new person, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so if the turnkey provider you're buying from is a little on the, I don't want to say iffier side because I don't at all want to claim that they're selling bad stuff. Um, if they're on the harder to work with side, <coughs> I definitely should have brought water. Um, it can just, it can just ruin the experience. And, you know, there's enough reasons to be nervous and I'm, well, not enough reasons. You know, people are nervous when they're buying their first property for, you know, for good or for bad. It's a big chunk of money. It's a big move. You're buying a property thousands of miles away from you potentially. So it's nerve wracking. So, you know, if you have a turnkey provider that offers a more stressful experience, it just adds to it. So that's why I'm not working with US Reeb anymore, but um, there are plenty of people who do work with US Reeb. So shoot me an email or a Facebook message. I'm happy to tell you who those people are. And also let me know if you're particularly interested in one of their specific markets, because they're in Kansas City, Dayton, Cincinnati. And more of the stories I've heard, the negative stories have come from Kansas City. I actually think they have a little bit better setup in Dayton and Cincinnati. So again, shoot me a message. I'm happy to connect you with a marketing company who can, um, well, actually, if you're already in touch with US Reeb, um, the marketing, you know, you've already been introduced to so the marketing company. It, it's kind of going backwards a little bit, um, but shoot me a message either way and we'll we'll talk more i'm happy to help but like i said i would love for people to be so interested in working with a marketing company over a direct provider that that's their issue <laughs> like that's a fantastic issue to have um doo -doo 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 -doo. um brendan says what are i was trying to scroll everybody's um thing so i'd love if you made this regular thing even if i missed the live i'd go back and rewatch the recording yeah totally so even if you can't make a facebook live um live it will facebook will automatically post this i think it's like 10 to 20 minutes after it finishes recording so it will be in the group and i'm also posting these to youtube um they're not necessarily called facebook lives but basically if there's any video on my channel on youtube that's an hour long it's one of these especially with a green background because i don't know how to make a cool background um and then frank says regularly scheduled uh facebook lives would be great there's always something new to learn i get so much value from you in the group thank you you're very welcome and thank you to all of you on here because we wouldn't even have a facebook live to do if you guys weren't taking the time out of your day to join on and ask all your questions so let me make sure i'm getting everyone's so jen says where are your other videos if you go to youtube my channel's name is ali boone invest um or you can just type in ali boone youtube and it'll show up um there's turnkey videos, real estate videos. Uh, I've started doing some business entrepreneurship videos, um, but tons of turnkey videos for sure. Um, going back to Brendan, what are the financing options for Berkey's? So 
Um, Berkeys are hard. They are going to require all cash for the distressed property and the rehab up front. Technically, if you're doing a burr property in general, forget about the burr keys, but burr property in general or value add, normally a lot of people would use hard money loans. The reason the burr key providers don't allow that is it's a little bit of a risk factor for everyone involved because, you know, if you're doing your own burr property and you take out a hard money loan in your name, you're in control of that experience for the most part. Um, obviously unforeseen you know rehab or whatever um but if something goes wrong it's just kind of within the confines of yourself um the bird key providers you know if you have a hard money loan that lasts you know four months six months whatever and something goes wrong on their end you know it's it's not even that they're on the hook for that loan but they have a conscience um and so because the bird keys you know they they kind of um I encourage slightly more experienced investors to do them, not because they're that much harder, but because the, the process isn't as straightforward and it is a much riskier process. So what I've seen is brand new investors do them and it's fine, except they get really nervous really quickly because they don't understand that something that might be perfectly normal is normal. They think it's some kind of you know massive delay and it's all their money in the pot and blah 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 um so that's another thing is they do kind of want to work with slightly more experienced investors so that's not why they require the cash up front but that also kind of helps with that a little bit um but ultimately it does take um it is less risk when you know the whole thing isn't dependent on someone's loan and it's just a straightforward uh, process that way if there's delays or whatever it's minimal impact um, so financing options basically you need to bring all cash for the distressed property and the rehab up front the rehab gets paid in milestone payments you know upon proof of completion of x y and z then you give another percentage of the rehab money until it's all complete the inspection does everything so you get tenants and all that and then you can go to your lender and just do a cash out refinance which is basically just taking a mortgage out but that's when you pull all that cash back out so at the end of the process um it's just like any other property it's just that instead of buying the property with the loan you get the loan after the fact so hopefully that uh helps on that one um, Brendan says, I like the idea of buying through a turnkey company that also provides management. I feel like with all the property management scare stories out there, I feel like there will be incentive for the company to provide good property management versus a third property, uh, third party management company. Am I right about this? Or how do you feel about this? If so, do you know or recommend any companies that offer this? Um, so I'm going to make this, uh, the last question I answer. And I can honestly say an hour flew by probably partially because I was having technological issues in the beginning um but uh so i'm going to finish up with this question if you guys have more questions um either write them down and what would be super cool if you have more questions is post them in the group um you know with covid and all that um i we've had lots of great discussions but i know people are so preoccupied with everything 2020 right now um i'd love to have more discussions going in the group so if you have a question that i don't have time to get to tonight um, number one, take it as motivation to join on for the next Facebook Live, but also seriously put a post up in the group and ask because that's what the whole group is for. There's so many experienced people in the group. It's really exciting. So go ahead and start posting those if you can. So the last um, uh, real quick, qu uh, Chris's question, have you looked at Mainstay Property Group out of Indy for Berkey? No, I haven't. But um, to that point and to anyone else, if you find out about any Berkey providers who have like a solid, good reputation, let me know. Because um, Berkey, Berkey providers, it's so dependent, like who runs that company matters. It's not so much the case with regular turnkeys, but you have to trust who you're buying a Berkey from because you don't want to give them all your money and then they bolt to the Caribbean. It's happened. Um, so I'm always, I, I literally work with one right now that I trust. Um, and I never probably expect to work with more than a couple at a time because of how critical it is of who's actually running that operation. But I am always wanting to find out more because it is a really cool model. Um, so if you have information on them or anyone else and you want me to look into them, I totally can. So the last question is a phenomenal one. I actually did a bit of a video about this one. The question is, is 
a turnkey provider company who offers in-house property management better than a turnkey provider who offers third-party property management. Now, here's this has come up so many times um, to the point where I've had to ponder this in my own head is because quite often people, you know, they'll reach out and they say, hey, I don't care who I work with, but I specifically want a turnkey provider who offers in-house property management. I'm like, and it got me thinking because at the time when I was really buying like hard and heavy, um, it was kind of a mixed bag. It was like half of them offered in-house, half of them offered third party. I had never thought twice about it. Um, I didn't even know really to think twice about it. So when people would start saying this, it got me wondering like, oh, wait, how do I feel about this? Exactly what Brendan's asking. <clears throat> what I have decided for myself, and because I'm going off the cuff on this, I may forget a couple of the reasons. I have decided personally for myself that the pros and cons list of the in-house property management and the third-party property management cancel each other out. I'm literally 50-50 on these options. Um, I'll give you the primary reason. I could go into more secondary reasons, but here's the primary reason that I think the worthiness or the benefit or whatever word you want to say is the same. So um, I mentioned earlier, and I, I say it so often, but it's so important to understand Turnkey providers are really good at what they do, which is negotiating deals, finding deals, buying them, rehabbing it. They're technical people. Customer service has notoriously sucked with turnkey providers, with a couple of exceptions of certain companies. Um, customer service and like business systems and all that, it's a very different brain set. So think of your local handyman. How notoriously terrible is your handyman at communicating? or texting you back. If it's anything like mine, it's god awful. Um, there are technical brains and there are more big picture brains. Some people, you know, have skills in both, but for the most part, if you think of like your typical house flipper or a handyman, they're very technical people. Very often their communication's terrible because it's a different skill set. Um, I'm not explaining this super well, but it's going to be good enough for now. Um, Turnkey providers are glorified house flippers. They are very technically minded. And the worst thing I've seen about turnkey providers, and this is this goes to Beth's point. Um, I mentioned it earlier when we were talking about Beth's issue. This literally spans the industry of turnkey providers. They can be so bad at customer service and business systems. I have literally stopped working with some turnkey providers because their business organization and systems are so bad that the properties are fantastic, but it's like you almost can't even get to the property because the internal workings of the company are so like in shambles. So where does property management lie? Guess what? Property management is not a technical thing. Some parts of it are, but you need what two things? Communication, and good systems. What did I just say the turnkey providers are notoriously horrible at? So most in most cases, turnkey provider companies only offer property management because they have to. It's part of the business model. So in order to sell a turnkey property, they have to offer property management. So they're like, oh, well, we'll you know offer it through our company. Cool. Well, here's the major con, in my opinion, to in-house property management. And one of the reasons why I'm almost inclined to say I actually do prefer third-party property management, turnkey providers suck customer, ser customer service and communication. And that's all property management is. So on the good hand, I think there's a lot more incentive because if the property management company is in-house, there's a major incentive because if they really suck, then they're not going to get repeat buyers for more turnkeys because turnkey buyers are repeat buyers. So you don't want to sell someone two turnkeys and then the property management be so bad that they're never going to work through your company again. That's a reality. And that's what I think should be the truth on paper. But for some reason, realistically, that incentive, while it's there on paper, it doesn't, it's, it's not that they don't care, it's that they don't have the knowledge or skill really to know how to provide that really good experience on the property management side. So on the good side, 
there should be incentive there, even though I kind of think it ends up being on paper. But the major downside is you're asking the turnkey provider to offer you customer service skills. But I can't, <laughs> I'm out of words. It's so bad. Can you tell I'm totally jaded of <laughs> turnkey providers? Um, but then if you think about third, property, third party property management, <coughs> definitely bring in a water next time. Um, they aren't part of the turnkey company. So they are a property management company in theory because, and that's all they do. So in theory, they're probably a lot better organized, but then to the opposite of the incentive for the in-house, they also don't have quite that incentive. You know, I mean, it depends on how many uh, properties are being sold. I will say, as I'm thinking this through my head, the incentive thing kind of goes out the window. I know a turnkey company right now who worked with a particular property management company who literally managed hundreds of properties for this company. They stopped performing. So in theory, you would think that if a company's going to pull hundreds of properties from you, that would be like, oh, I better start performing now. It should happen, but it doesn't necessarily happen. So in my mind, third party property management, that's what they do. But then again, then you're losing that connection to the turnkey provider more or less. So to answer your question, I'm 100% right on the fence, although as I said that, I think I might be a little bit more on the third party. But, um, you know, everyone thinks that they want a turnkey provider with in-house management. And maybe, um, you know, certainly like REI Nation, who's known for customer service. Yeah, 100%, even though I think they charge an arm and a leg for all that. Like, that's a whole separate topic. But, um, you know, so in those cases, it might be good. Um, so I think there can be, I think it depends really on the turnkey provider. I think it really depends on the opportunity itself. I can tell you, all of the turnkey properties that I bought that had in-house management, I no longer have any of those managers. So I, you know, property management, whether it was in-house or third party, I have none of the original property managers. And I've been through one, two, three, I'm on my fourth round of property managers now in like eight or nine years property management really just sucks anyways um not to completely you know poo poo the entire idea but if, they, if i was going to name a downfall to turnkeys and to you know just out of state investing in general that's it um so i'm going to so i hope that answers your question um i will i'm going to put a note uh brendan to um in the comments uh, when this video gets, uh, when the replay gets listed, um, it's going to take me a couple hours because I have to run somewhere. I'm going to put a link to the YouTube video that I made talking specifically about this. Do I prefer in-house managers or third party? I'll put a link to that YouTube video in the comments section. Um, or I'll put it as a separate post because I think the comments sometimes on these can get a little um, saturated. Um, but I'm going to hop off here. I honestly love doing these things. I'm so excited all you guys joined on for the first Facebook Live in basically a year. Okay, maybe a little bit less and we had the one during quarantine. But um, so leave in the comments or respond in the group, you know, are these helpful? How often would you like these to happen? Um, if you have any turnkey questions, please post them in the group. Um, I can also take notes along the way where we can talk about these on a future live. Um, again, thank you guys for being in the group. I can't tell you how constantly shocked I am. I had no idea this group was going to become a thing. And not only has it become a thing, I think it's become an awesome thing and it's because of you guys on here. Um, so much good participation, so many great questions. Um, everyone is super respectful. Like I was, I had the worst in my head cause you know, you're in Facebook groups and people just start screaming at each other. And I was like, Oh my God, what happens when people start screaming at each other? Like, I love this group. I really do. So thank all of you for being on here. Um, and I cannot wait to do another one of these. So let's, we'll figure it out. Um, I don't know if the day needs to change. If you have day or time preferences, let me know that. I'm about as open and flexible. Um, I want to accommodate you guys. So let me know. And with the new interface, I don't even know how to end the video. So I might just have to stay here all night. Okay, just kidding. I found it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being in the group. And I can't wait to talk to all of you more soon.